Exploration is the driving force behind humankind. We have been exploring since the dawn of our existence, and it's still at the center of everything we do. It means trying new things and opening your mind up to new possibilities. And because of that, we can make better decisions tomorrow from the information we have unearthed today. We are in front of one of the latest discoveries here in the West Bank of Luxor. But exploration can also lead to this, from perfectly preserved extinct animals frozen in time, to a party city in the desert that exists for only one week a year. 20 shocking things recently discovered. <laughs> Dead blue whale. Spain just shocked American scientists with this, a sudden rush of whale deaths. Over the past 20 years, authorities have recorded almost 11,000 stranded or dead whales in this region of Spain. Around 80 of these animals had injuries consistent with ship strikes, such as deep lacerations, and 34 were confirmed to have been hit by a ship. Based on these two decades of observations, a whale in the Canary Islands is killed in a suspected collision every three months. And sometimes they need to be hauled out of the water like this using a crane and some scuba divers to secure the lines around this blue whale. As this whale is the largest mammal on Earth, its size can reach lengths of up to 110 feet long. That's nearly 20 feet longer than a professional NBA basketball court. So, the next time you're wondering just how big a blue whale is, take a long look at the field or court at your next sports game. An adult blue whale can weigh up to 333,000 pounds, making their blue whale size both extraordinarily long and large. This crane can handle it though, it certainly gives onlookers a sight to see. A new high-speed ferry service in this part of Spain may be to blame for the unusual spike in whale deaths. So government authorities and ferry operators have moved to address the issue. Frozen Horse A 42,000-year-old baby horse was discovered frozen in Siberian permafrost recently. And incredibly, the foal contained a surprise, the oldest liquid blood on record. The animal was found in one of the harshest climates on Earth in the Batagaika crater in eastern Siberia. It was one to two weeks old and stood 39 inches at the shoulder when it died, drowning in mud. Remarkably, the icy permafrost preserved the full skin and hair down to the tiniest detail. But the liquid blood was the biggest surprise for scientists. Typically, blood turns to powder even in well-preserved carcasses, because fluids gradually evaporate over thousands of years, he said. In the mammoth dubbed Buttercup by researchers, the blood was preserved in ice inside the carcass. This is the second time that a defrosted Ice Age animal has turned out to contain liquid blood. In 2018, scientists extracted liquid blood from a 32,200-year-old mammoth carcass. That makes the baby horse's blood the oldest ever found by 10,000 years. Not only will researchers study the biochemistry of the blood, gut contents and organs, but they will also study samples of the soils and paleo plants found in the layer of permafrost where the foal died. They're already trying to clone the frozen horse, a member of an extinct species called the Lena horse. What's next? Dinosaurs? Lost Golden City In Luxor, Egypt's lost 3400-year-old Golden City was recently discovered by archaeologists. It is one of the most important archaeological discoveries in the world. The Egyptian expedition was completely surprised to find the largest city like this ever built in Egypt. The excavation started in 2020, and within weeks, to the team's great surprise, formations of mud bricks began to appear in all directions. What they unearthed was the site of a large city in a good condition of preservation, with almost complete walls and rooms filled with tools of daily life. The archaeological layers have laid untouched for thousands of years, left by the ancient residents as if it were yesterday. Founded by one of the greatest rulers of Egypt, King Amenhotep, the ninth king of the 18th dynasty who ruled Egypt in the mid-1300s BC, this city was the largest administrative and industrial settlement in the era of the Egyptian Empire on the western bank of Luxor. The king ruled the city alongside his wife, the renowned queen Nefertiti. 
And after they passed away, their son ruled Egypt and continued to use and live in this place until it was abandoned. And it remained a secret until now. The discovery of the lost golden city will give archaeologists a rare glimpse into the life of the ancient Egyptians. Mummy is 4,300 years old in Saqqara. Archaeologists uncovered several tombs reportedly dating back 4,300 years at an ancient burial ground in Egypt recently. The vast burial site at the ancient Egyptian capital Memphis, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is home to more than a dozen pyramids, animal graves, and old monasteries dating back from the 5th and 6th dynasties, around the 25th to the 22nd centuries BC. Several items including pottery, carved statues, and stone murals were recovered from the newly discovered tombs. A total of four tombs were reportedly discovered at the burial ground, with the most important belonging to a supervisor of the nobles and a priest in the pyramid complex. And more importantly, a mummy was discovered at the bottom of a deep burial shaft. Down a 50-foot shaft, the expedition also found a large limestone sarcophagus that had remained sealed, just as the ancient Egyptians left it 4,300 years ago. Inside was a mummy featuring a gold leaf covering that belonged to a man described as one of the oldest and most complete non-royal mummies ever found in the country. These discoveries have been a key component of the government's plans, the long-delayed inauguration of the Grand Egyptian Museum at the foot of the pyramids in Giza, aimed to draw in 30 million tourists. So, this mummy is kind of a big deal. The Dragon Blood Tree Although they sound like a prop from the Game of Thrones TV saga, dragon's blood trees are evolutionary marvels of the plant kingdom, native to a single island in the Socotra archipelago, off the coast of Yemen in the Arabian Sea. The extraordinary looking dragon's blood tree can grow to more than 30 feet in height and live for 600 years. Looming over the island's rocky mountainous terrain, it produces rich berries and a red sap, the source of its dragon blood name that has been used for centuries as everything from medicine to lipstick. The tree's branches grow in an outward forking pattern that gives them the look of a giant mushroom or an umbrella sucked inside out by the wind. And that appearance isn't the only umbrella-like aspect of the dragon's blood. New research suggests the tree could also be considered an umbrella species the protection of which would benefit a wide range of other species. The theory is that by protecting these animals and their habitats, you also directly or indirectly conserve everything else that lives near them. This tree has long been considered an indicator species, meaning it quickly shows signs of changes to its environment and plays host to a wide range of the island's other unique wildlife. The researchers found that these trees provided food and shelter to at least 12 of Socotra's endemic reptile species. 3,000-year-old wishing well In the German state of Bavaria, archaeologists have unearthed the remains of a well-preserved Bronze Age wishing well. People sunk jewelry and ceramics as offerings in the special water spring, similar to how coins are still thrown into wishing wells today, according to the archaeologists. This wooden water point is dated to be more than 3,000 years old and at around 16.4 feet reached particularly deep into the ground compared to others. It is extremely rare for a well to survive more than 3,000 years so well. Its wooden walls have been completely preserved at the bottom and are still partially damp from the groundwater. This also explains the good condition of the finds made from organic materials, which are now being examined more closely. Experts hope this will provide them with more information about the everyday life of the settlers of the time. The team of archaeologists discovered, in what was once the base of the fountain, 26 bronze clothing pins, a bracelet, two metal spirals, a mounted animal tooth, amber beads, and more than 70 ceramic vessels. These expensive items were not items for everyday use. The state they were in and when discovered suggests they were carefully lowered into the water rather than dropped or thrown. The wishes don't come true unless you put some thought into them. These ancient people took wishes pretty seriously, it seems. 11-week-old baby grows fang tooth. Little Oscar O'Byrne from Ireland gave his mom a big surprise when he woke up one morning. She discovered that her 11-week-old son had grown a fang overnight. This would scare anyone, not just a parent. 
The new mom went to see her baby when he woke up around 7 a.m. She would normally give her little boy a soother at this time, and he would go back to sleep for another hour. But this was not the case. Little Oscar kept crying, so she took him out and changed him. But when she went to feed him, the concerned mom found the tooth in his mouth. It had grown overnight. Shocked by the discovery, the mom rushed her baby boy to a hospital. The doctors, however, were baffled. They were debating whether it was a tooth or not. They kept calling other doctors in. They didn't know what to do. So they called in a dentist to see little Oscar. No explanation is given for the appearance of the tooth, and it appears to be a mystery to the doctors and dentists. The mother was able to take the mysterious tooth home to show Oscar when he gets a bit older, and thankfully she can laugh about it now, she said. We were terrified at first, but now we're seeing the funny side. Me and my husband were laughing about it. Hopefully there will only be normal teeth appearing for Oscar in the future. It's crazy to think that such a prominent tooth could appear overnight. Black Rock City The Burning Man Festival started small back in 1986 when a few friends got together for a bonfire on a beach in San Francisco. The party became a yearly gathering and soon was relocated to the northern Nevada desert, about 100 miles north of Reno. The event has since grown tremendously. In fact, it's now a huge production. People come from locales across the globe to build a temporary city known as Black Rock City, only to dismantle it a week later. With its distinctive C-shaped design oriented around the man in the center, Black Rock City has become a symbol of Burning Man itself. The entire perimeter is seven square miles, but much of that is devoted to open space of art installations and music events. About 80,000 people known as burners make the annual trek to a harsh stretch of northwestern Nevada and set up a massive yet makeshift encampment dubbed Black Rock City. They build elaborate villages, a medical center, an airport, and performance stages. From there it gets weird, but that is the point. Over the course of about nine days, attendees test the limits of self-expression through art, costume, and design, while building community, a kind of utopia. It's become an inspiration for city planners looking for useful lessons to take home from a city that rebuilds and redesigns itself every year. Thracian Chariot with Horse Skeletons A four-wheeled chariot with horses in a tomb of a Thracian aristocrat from the first century AD was recently discovered. The chariot had four big wheels with a diameter of four feet, embellished richly with silver-coated small figures of Eros and riding mythical creatures with bodies of panthers. As you can see, the skeletons of two horses and a dog were also discovered next to the chariot. This is one of the very few cases where archaeologists can trace the entire pattern of ritual practices accompanying the burials of prominent people from this era, who believed in a better afterlife. The deceased was to be laid with all of the valuable objects they needed during their lifetime. The richer and nobler the dead person, the more exuberant the burial gifts. Table pottery, glass vessels, well-preserved wooden and leather objects, some of which may have been horse harnesses, and other gifts were also discovered in the funerary mound. All artifacts were used for the funeral of a wealthy aristocrat, though the people of some other regions of the Roman Empire also sometimes buried their noblemen near chariots. This practice was by far most popular and long-standing here in ancient Thrace. Since the archaeologists excavated this chariot burial before looters got to it, the artifacts can be displayed publicly in a museum. The Pinnacles Desert You'd be forgiven for thinking you were dreaming of life on other planets. This lunar landscape feels so far from reality. But it is in fact a very real place. Located at the southern gateway to the Coral Coast, the Pinnacles Desert of Nambung National Park is Western Australia's most visited attraction. Covering nearly 77 square miles, it is home to thousands of these curious limestone pillars that jut out from the earth. The pinnacles were formed when the sea receded and left behind stacks of seashells. As time passed, the coastal winds blew away the surrounding sand and shaped the pillars we see today. Three major theories have been proposed as to how they came to be. The first theory states that they formed as a result of a period of extensive weathering in the limestone. A second theory states that they were formed through the preservation of trees. 
where roots became groundwater conduits and wind erosion exposed the calcrete pillars. A third proposal suggests that plants played an active role, drawing water through the soil of the roots, driving the flow of calcium to the root surface, and over time turned into these. Whatever the reason, the Pinnacles Desert makes a great day trip for anyone with an even an interest in what the Earth may have looked like in the primordial times. The Pinnacles may be as old as half a million years. For Glyptodonts the resting place of ancient armadillos that roamed the Earth some 20,000 years ago has been discovered in Argentina. It just so happens a farmer stumbled upon the graveyard containing fossilized shells of four massive glyptodonts, with the largest being the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Glyptodonts are the early ancestors of our modern armadillos that lived mostly across North and South America during the Pleistocene epoch. Some of the ancient armadillos had shells as long as 5 feet and as thick as 2 inches and roamed South America for 30 million years before facing extinction around 10,000 years ago. Some believe early man was to blame for the animal's disappearance by overusing their hard shells for shelter. These hefty armadillo ancestors were staunch herbivores. A DNA test confirmed that Glyptodon was indeed related to modern-day armadillos, the latter of which means little armored one in Spanish. The remains were discovered in a dried-out riverbed near the Argentine capital of Buenos Aires. At first, only two were spotted, but two more were found while paleontologists excavated the site. Researchers believe the group consists of two adults and two young animals, but further testing will determine the cause of death, sex, and weight of the remains. Who knew they used to be so big? The tomb of Qasr al-Farid In the middle of the dry and arid plains of northeastern Saudi Arabia, a mysterious and solitary building stands majestically in the sand. It is the tomb of Qasr al-Farid, and it is one of the most famous monuments in this archaeological site. Called the Lonely Castle, Qasar al-Farid is nevertheless a tomb. It was carved out of a rock that appeared out of nowhere about 2,000 years ago. Yet there seems to be no evidence of burial inside. Weird, right? With its unfinished state and unusual location, the tomb of Qasar al-Farid is still a mystery. The description of the site as a castle is misleading. The ancient people of this region had a unique construction technique that saw their tombs being chiseled right out of the rock from the top down. Such is the case with the Qasar al-Farid, although the monument appears to never have been completed. The craftsmanship and precision of work slowly deteriorate closer to the base of the structure. Generally speaking, this may be seen as a strike against the site in terms of its beauty or its archaeological importance. But the tapering finish on the facade has actually turned out to be a boon. The incomplete portion of the tomb is a terrific window into the steps taken by the ancient carvers. Archaeological importance aside, the lonely castle stands out as a starkly unforgettable wonder in a region that is crowded with them. Mysterious Qasar of Dra Qasar in Arabic means fortified village or fort. The mysterious and enigmatic Qasar Dra, about 30 miles from the red city of Timimun, is in the middle of the Algerian Sahara, and it remains a historical enigma. Built in the middle of an ocean of sand dunes in the middle of nowhere, it has never revealed its secrets. Some archaeologists and historians have looked into its history, as have many foreign archaeologists, but its stones and soil have remained silent. During what century or year was it built? By whom was it built? What was its use? No proven answers, only vague assumptions. Even in the ancient writings of the region's indigenous peoples, there is no historical reference to this Qasar. It was built with strong foundations and strong walls and would have provided a strong defensive location for any civilization. These buildings highlight the complex identities of the civilizations that occupied this area of North America. Perhaps one day, we will know much more about this Qasar who sits in the middle of the desert like a solitary king. This magnificent structure holds many mysteries and will continue to do so until more extensive archaeological investigations can take place. 
There are many similar structures in North Africa, but none match the peculiarities of the Kassar draw. Maybe someday we will know its secrets. Kingdom of Komajin The Kingdom of Komajin was a political entity, heavily influenced by Armenian and ancient Persian culture and traditions. Established in what is now modern-day Turkey, when you visit the site on Nimrod Mountain, you go back centuries. Not only does this place display a unique view of the rising sun, but it also testifies to the perfection of the art of the Hellenistic era. The unique temple on the top of the mountain was completely unknown until 1881. Archaeological excavations first began in 1953. Mount Nimrud has been extensively excavated since its first discovery, and has been affected by tourism and exposure to extreme heat and cold. To build the monumental sculptures and monuments on Mount Nemrut, very high technology was used that could not be found anywhere in the world at the time. At the foot of the mountain, you see the Guardian Lion, which signifies the sovereignty of the Kingdom of Komajin on Earth. Many statues of eagles and statues of Apollo, Zeus, Hercules, and the King of Komajin can also be seen spectacularly at sunset. As the merging of the temples and the lineage of their kings, who date back to the myths of history in Greece, Iran, and Turkey, there is evidence of the dual origin of the culture of this kingdom. In 1987, authorities listed this site as a World Heritage Site, and rightfully so. Hormoz Thousand Colors This island is one of the most colorful and magical islands, not in the Middle East, but in the world, and one of the most intact islands in Iran. It's a calm place, home to a small village and the natural wonders created by the island's geography. Hormuz Island is mostly barren. The hilly island of Iran on the Strait of Hormuz is 5 miles off the coast. The island is famous because it is covered with gold and silver and white sand and soil. Soils of different colors have been formed due to different chemical reactions. Lime, white, color, copper, green color, iron, and red color, as well as different elements and compounds have created different colors. So if we walk around the island, the soil around us changes color every few hundred feet. It's a place of incredible beauty with characteristics unique throughout the world. Most of all, the gorgeous ruby red beach. The cause of the characteristic color is actually due to the presence of a high concentration of iron oxides. And in fact, the darker sand causes the sea waves to take on a more intense and reddish color. Once you bathe in these waters, the color remains on your skin for days to come. The island of Hormuz is nicknamed Rainbow Island, for obvious reasons, thanks to the many island colors and surrounding waters. Gold coin found in theater basement. Cha-ching! Hundreds of ancient gold coins were found recently in the basement of a former theater in northern Italy. The coins date back to the late Roman imperial times in the 4th or 5th century and were spilling out of a two-handled soapstone jar called an amphora, buried in the dirt. Whoever placed the jar in that place buried it in such a way that in case of danger, they could go and retrieve it, said an expert in rare coins. They were stacked in rolls similar to those seen in the bank today. The local archaeology superintendent said that the coins had an inestimable value. We're talking about an exceptional discovery, they said. Archaeologists were digging through the basement of the historic Cressoni Theater, which closed in 1997. The excavation was being carried out within the restructuring of the theater, and the site was being turned into residential apartments. And there it was. According to reports, archaeologists also unearthed a gold bar inside a jar on the same site. The theater is not far from where several other Roman artifacts have been discovered, according to the Ministry of Cultural Heritage and Activities. The coins in Como were transferred to a restoration laboratory in Milan, where they will be examined further by archaeologists. They are among several important Roman artifacts discovered in recent years. The Tombs of Qom el Shokafa The Catacombs of Qom el Shokafa, Arabic for meaning Mound of Shards, is a historical archaeological site located in Alexandria, Egypt, and is considered one of the Seven Wonders of the Middle Ages. The catacombs were named this because the area used to contain a mound of shards of terracotta, which mostly consisted of jars and objects made of clay. 
These objects were left by those visiting the tombs, who would bring food and wine for their consumption during the visit. However, they did not wish to carry these containers home from this place of death, so they would break them. Simple as that. At the time of the discovery, heaps of these broken plates were found. The necropolis consisted of a series of Alexandrian tombs, statues, and archaeological objects. Due to the time period, many of the features of the catacombs of Qom el Shakofa merge Roman, Greek, and Egyptian cultural points. Some statues are Egyptian in style, yet bear Roman clothes and hairstyles, while others feature share a similar style. If you visit, you will stop at Qom al Shakafa to enjoy the splendor of this interesting place. It contains corridors, stairs, hidden rooms, graves, and luxurious dining halls, in addition to inscriptions and drawings that show the religious rituals during the burial of the dead. The Great Wall of China it doesn't get any more iconic than this. The Great Wall was continuously built from the 3rd century BC to the 17th century AD on the northern border of the country of China. Like a writhing dragon's tail, it is an imposing architectural marvel, and it's often hailed as one of the greatest man-made wonders of the world. It was the result of a great military defense project of successive Chinese empires, with a total length of more than 12,400 miles. The structure's height varies considerably, from 15 feet all the way to 39 feet. At its widest point, the wall is 32 feet thick. Its main body consists of walls, horse tracks, watchtowers, and shelters on the wall, and includes fortresses and passes along the wall. Hundreds of thousands of men died while working on the wall, which required them to carry heavy materials on their backs up to the top of the ridgelines. Much of the work on the oldest sections of the Great Wall were built by hand. Though primitive technology, wheelbarrows, ropes, basket, and pulley systems, and horse or oxen-drawn carts was also used. The Great Wall reflects the collision and exchanges between agricultural civilizations and nomadic civilizations in ancient China. It's an outstanding example of the superb military architecture, technology, and art of ancient China. It embodies unparalleled significance as the national symbol for safeguarding the security of the country and its people. Akaba's Underwater Military Museum Could you see yourself swimming here? The world's first underwater military museum has been created just off the shores of Aqaba, Jordan. A total of 19 pieces of hardware were sunk over a period of seven working days, leading up to the launch ceremony. The equipment was sunk in battle formation and includes tanks of different sizes, an ambulance, a military crane, a troop carrier, anti-aircraft guns, and a combat helicopter. According to a press release from the authorities who oversaw the project, Great attention was given to the environmental effects of sinking the equipment. All hazardous materials were removed to comply with the environmental best practices. The location of the museum was specifically chosen for its lack of coral and other marine life. It is hoped that not only will the new attraction bring more divers to Aqaba, but will also help alleviate the burden of increased tourism on local coral reefs. The military museum is the first product of its kind in the world. It's important because the sport of diving in Aqaba is attracting tourists, and many tourists from around the world come here to practice this sport. The machines were sunk at a depth range where visitors will be able to enjoy the attraction by snorkeling, scuba diving, and glass bottom boat tours. Elephant Rock There are many elephant rocks around the world. Sri Lanka, Australia, Nevada, China, Italy, and Saudi Arabia. But not until recently did the world find out about the one in Iceland. The elephant rock became a social media sensation. Some people even claimed it wasn't real. And some still think it's a hoax. Nope, it's real, and it's amazing. The elephant rock is in the Westman Islands archipelago south of Iceland. More specifically, on the biggest island of the archipelago, and the only one inhabited. As you can see, it looks like an elephant that's having a drink from the ocean. The locals say it must have a drinking problem, since it's been drinking for thousands of years. But it wasn't always here. This unique basalt geological rock formation is thought to have been formed in one of the many volcanic eruptions of Mount Eldfell in the last 15,000 years. Its most recent eruption was in 1973, which resulted in a complete evacuation of the island's population. 
but the elephant remained. This natural wonder is best viewed by boat, from May to September. You can experience more of the archipelago and, of course, our elephant. There are also guided walking trips from May to August with safety lines. There is even a campground nearby, so you can literally stay with the beautiful giant. Hopefully videos like these will renew your curiosity for all things undiscovered. Luckily for us, there are experts out there who do most of the hard stuff. We just get to sit back, subscribe, and like, and the shocking discoveries come to us.